ground ball footwork from the first base side depends on whether you have a left-hander or a right-hander. Obviously, there's some advantages to having a left-handed first baseman because the left-hander is opened up toward the throws that we're going to primarily make, and that's second base and third base. The right-hander has a little more difficult time. So one of the things that we try to work on is to make sure that we secure the ball, number one, and number two, that we put our body in a good position to make a throw. If I'm a right-handed first baseman and a ball's hit right at me, there's a couple of ways that I can throw the ball to second base, and we'll start with second. The first is that if I feel the ball here, I can actually open up and turn and throw. A lot of first basemen will find it much easier to feel this ball to step here and throw, again, turning their back. But the key is to be able to make a good throw. Third base is not much of a factor because now we can feel the ball with our good fielding principles. We can step to third base with our right foot and make a throw. The key is efficient footwork here. We want to be quick getting our feet down. We don't want to take long steps. To review fielding a ground ball at first base, field the ball out in front. Pivot on your throwing hand foot to turn and throw. Or step forward with your throwing hand foot. Turn your back to home plate and throw. Fielding bunts is one of the most important responsibilities of our corners. Many a times games are won or lost because of non-aggressive first basemen and third basemen. Let's talk about some of the general principles about fielding a bunt. Number one, obviously we want to open up as we field the bunt to make sure that we're putting our feet in position to make a throw to first base. The other thing we want to do is we want to feel the ball obviously off our throwing side. So we don't want to let the ball get too deep and overrun the ball. We want to try to feel the ball inside of our throwing foot. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to provide a path that we can throw quickly and accurately. And it's very similar to shortstop. We're going to open up a little bit and make a good sidearm throw to first base. That will work for either the right-hander or the left-hander. Now, when a bunt goes down, we're always thinking second base. And the one thing nice about having a left-hander is because the left-hander is open to second base. So they're going to get themselves in a position to feel that ball, and they're going to think two. And if they can't get out at second base, then they're always going to be able to adjust to one. The right-hander, it's more difficult because the right-hander now has to get around this ball and they're going to turn their back so that they can get themselves in a position to make this throw. Another important concept when feeling the bunt is always use your glove when the ball's rolling. The only time that I allow fielders to feel the ball barehanded is when the ball is stopped. Obviously, if the ball is stopped, the bare hand is much quicker because the ball is in the throwing hand and we can make a quick throw. But too many times we try to bare hand the ball when it's moving, and if we don't secure the ball, it doesn't do us a, a bit of good to be quick to make a throw. To review fielding bunts at first base, field the ball to the inside of your throwing hand foot. Open up a little and throw to first base. Okay, we'd like to share with you some basic footwork at first base. Whether you're right-handed or left-handed, it really doesn't matter. The big thing when it comes to footwork is finding first basemen that are good to, at getting back at the bag efficiently. Number one, always turn toward the infield. It's never a good idea for a first baseman to turn their back to the infield to go find the bag. We always want to turn toward the infield so that now we can find the bag as quick as we can. And what I like to do is get our first bases in a good athletic position where they can move, okay? Good receiving position. And now we're gonna be able to step to the ball with our glove foot. Another key factor is being able to move at the bag. Sometimes infielders or first basemen will go to the bag and they'll stretch too soon. And next thing you know, when they stretch too soon and the ball's off to the side, they can't move. That's why it's important when you get back to the bag that we want to find the bag as quick as we can, but we want to keep our feet underneath us 
in case we need to slide on the bag to make a catch. I can move either way. If I keep both heels on the bag and I find the bag quickly, I can slide to the inside of the bag to make the catch, or I can slide to the outside of the bag to make a catch. To review footwork around the bag, turn toward the infield and get back to the bag. Get in a good athletic position and step to the ball with your glove hand foot. Pickoffs are a very effective play in fast pitch softball. There's usually two ways that we run a pickoff play. One is with the second baseman covering and the first baseman being a decoy. The second is just a quick play, a quick throw to the first baseman. Now, if I'm a right-handed first baseman, I have a little bit of a disadvantage because if I open up toward the infield, which takes time, my glove is farther away from the tag and I've got to reach to make the tag. A left-hander has an advantage because with the glove on the right hand, now they open up, the left-hander has that glove close to the tag, and it's easy for them to swipe and make the tag. One concept I'm going to give you, and it can burn you sometimes, so you must be aware of it, is having your right-handed first baseman turn their back. And if you do this now and then, it's not going to hurt you, but if smart teams pick up on it, the minute that you they try to draw a throw and you turn your back, they're going to go to second base. But truthfully, once in a while, the quickest way for me to get there as a right-hander is to turn my back to the infield and tag kind of blindly with the runner coming, hopefully coming back to first. To review pickoff plays, if you're right-handed, turn your back to the infield, receive the throw, and make the tag. first baseman has a huge responsibility when it comes to relay throws to home plate. In our system, our first baseman is the cutoff to all balls hit to the outfield except left field and all extra base hits. The one thing that we need to be realized is it's a short throw. Again, we want to make sure that they're in a position where they're deep enough that the catcher has opportune time to make a decision whether we're going to cut the ball or let the ball go through. We want to make sure that we give a visual cue, just like we did with the middle infielders. But the difference is our footwork. Remember, the middle infielders throwing from the outfield would open up and actually shuffle to make a throw. The corners, third base and first base, it's a nice short throw, so what we want them to do is we want them to step with their throwing foot to the ball, plant, and throw. Hit me, hit me, hit me. To review fielding relay throws, put your hands up in the air to give the outfielder a visual cue. Step with your throwing hand foot to the ball. Plant and throw. Hit me, hit me, hit me. 